Greetings, hi, hello, welcome to a new monthly reset video. It is the month of August, almost, when I'm filming this, and my mom always goes to say it. Wow, that went fast. <laughs> but especially July. July was so, so busy. I did so much. It was such a great month, and it just flew by. So we're just going to get right into this video, right into the reset, the recap, everything like that. So first of all, let me get my notes set up. All right, so we're going to start this monthly reset by reviewing the goals that I had for July. And I didn't have that many. Goal number one was to do eight runs. I did not achieve this, and I don't know how many runs I went on this month because if you'll notice, I'm not wearing my Fitbit, and I haven't been wearing my Fitbit for the majority of the month. Um, I started getting a lot of, like, skin irritation with my Fitbit, and you can actually, like... You might not be able to see it on camera, but the skin texture under where the watch would be compared to the rest of my skin on my arm is like scaly and weird. <laughs> and I obviously have the tan line. And so I've just decided to take a break from wearing the Fitbit. I also have like a permanent dent in my arm from it. So I've just been taking a break from wearing the watch and even like during working out, during sleeping, everything like that. So... I don't know how many runs I went on this month, but I know for a fact it was not eight. And the big reason for that is because of the heat. We've had a couple of really hot weeks. It's actually cooling down this week compared to previous weeks in the month. And also the smoke is officially here from wildfire season. Smoke season is in full swing. Most mornings when I wake up, the AQI is about 100 to 120. And in the afternoon and evenings, it's more like 150 to 160 or so. And I just don't care enough about running to do it out in the smoke. And so I haven't been. <laughs> so did not do eight runs this week, this month. And my cardio has kind of, I guess you would say suffered because of it, but I have gotten in other forms of exercise and cardio, which I'll talk about later. I had the goal of doing one sewing project, which I did not do. And honestly was a really ambitious goal when I made it. The summer is just a really hard time to do sewing projects for me. Sewing is like a shoulder season activity, so like spring and fall, because I'm out and about in the summer, especially on the weekends. I'm trying to go camping, I'm trying to go hiking, backpacking, I'm traveling, and the weekends are the best time for me to get sewing done because I can't just like have a project and pull it in and out super easily because there's no area for it to really hang out. So I kind of have to pull everything out, do the thing for a full day, put everything back. And the summer just isn't really the time for that to happen. So I did not do a sewing project. Uh, this month, and I probably won't for a few more months. I also made it a goal to do a YouTube short every week, and that also did not happen largely because, again, it's such a busy month for me, and with the we almost week of travel, we were traveling for like five days, which is a pretty long time for us to do at once, um, and so... Yeah, it was just like too busy to do that. And if I had had kind of this habit of doing shorts once a week leading into the, the month, I think I would have been a little bit more apt and more set up for success. But because I've not been super consistent with shorts and I don't have this routine, um, it's definitely hard to like maintain that um, or even create that in a really busy month. So that did not happen. The one thing that I did successfully do, I would say, is reduce general like unnecessary spending from the month of June into July. The thing that makes this a little bit tricky is because we were traveling and so we are going out for like basically every meal, you're doing these fun things that you wouldn't normally do, like renting mountain bikes. Um, and so spending was a little bit higher in July, but it was associated with the travel and like spending money on meals at airports and things like that um, because of being delayed longer than we expected to um, and things of that nature, not necessarily just random spending on a day-to-day -day basis. It was almost all associated with the travel. But we did get $300 back from Airbnb <laughs> um, compared to the almost $500 that our Airbnb costs for two nights because they had illegally closed and sealed the bedroom window so that if there was an emergency, you did not have two methods of egress. You had one, which was the door, um, but they had screwed shut the window and we complained to Airbnb about it because that's illegal. Like bedrooms have to have two forms of egress. Um, and we only complained really because it was so hot in there and we wanted to be able to open the window to cool down the bedroom. If it were not so hot that we needed to open the window, we probably never would have noticed and wouldn't have reported them, but 
sorry, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Like I hope they don't have it screwed shut anymore because that's a safety hazard. But anyway, we got refunded $300 for that on a $491 interview. All right, so that is the recap of the goals from the month of July. And so I'm actually going to do things in a different order than I actually have them in my notes. I am going to then go back to my favorite kind of like event or highlights from the month. And it was definitely the trip to Flagstaff with Matt for his friend's wedding. It was an absolutely beautiful wedding and I got to meet a bunch of his friends that I hadn't met before that he went to college with. Um, I had met the groom, but I hadn't met basically anyone else at the wedding. I guess the groom and then one of our other friends who has come up to Bozeman before. Um, but it was so good getting to meet more of Matt's friends from college and just kind of see them interacting with each other. And it was, it's like people that he knew and lived with, like most of the guys that I met there, I think they'd lived, lived together at some point. And so it was really fun. Also, we went mountain biking. I did a single track mountain bike ride for the first time. We rented the mountain bikes, like I had hinted at earlier. We played some sand volleyball. We played some grass volleyball and I love volleyball and it really like reignited this passion and love for volleyball in me. So I'm trying to figure out how the heck I can continue that here in Bozeman when no one wants to play with me. Um, and then we also had some really good food while we were down there. We went to this awesome vegan restaurant and had samosa pot stickers, which were like super crispy and delicious. Had some really good ice cream. Um, had a good time. Got the Waffle House when we were in Phoenix. I saw a saguaro cactus. Like it was just a really great time in Flagstaff. And I was really thankful that we were able to go for the wedding and to be there for as long as we were um, with how busy both of us are. And then other highlights from the month, I went on two backpacking trips, both one nights, um, one night with Matt and then one night with a handful of my friends in a vlog that I just recently posted. And so I spent a total of four nights in a tent, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that uh, because we did spend two nights camping while we were in Flagstaff. Also in July is the Big Sky State Fair that I went to with a friend, went to a concert, saw all the animals, got some fair food, also saw so many concerts too many concerts one might say I don't know but it was a really good time um it was just a very busy very action-packed month and it was really fun really exhausting but I had a really good time um hanging out with everyone and then on top of all that there was like pretty regular barbecues at a friend of ours house we were like this past weekend, Matt and I just went out kind of late at night and met up with friends out at the bars um, just for like Matt would get a drink and I would just kind of hang out and chat with everyone, sipping my water or whatever. But it was just, it was a very social month and a, I did a good job of like getting out of the house, which was lovely. But I also had plenty of nights of being a hermit at home, believe me. <laughs> so then looking back on other favorites from the month, I... Matt and I purchased and installed an AC unit for our apartment. So it's a window AC unit. I will insert some B-roll while as I'm talking. Um, but the windows in our apartment open up to less than 16 inches and a standard window AC unit is 16 inches wide. So we had to get this like specialized, fancy, very expensive one from Lowe's. Um, but it's uh, rated for like 350 square feet, which is the size of our apartment. And she's beefy. She keeps it cool for sure. So we've been keeping it at like 62 to 65 in here, which is chilly. But um, when we were going through that heat, I don't want to say a hot flash, a heat wave. <laughs> when we were going through the heat wave, it was delicious coming down here and being like immediately cooled off. And then if you hang out long enough, you're like, ooh, I kind of need a blanket and a sweatshirt. <laughs> so we're about to be in another heat wave, um, probably about the time that this is getting posted. So really thankful for the air conditioner. We also have an air purifier. We got that in the month of June and I forgot to talk about it, um, but that was really lovely, especially when we were still in allergy season in June and it's been nice also with the smoke and the wildfires. Um, the really nice thing about our AC unit is actually we can close the exhaust. So we're just using air from within the apartment. So we're not drawing in that wildfire smoke. Whereas what we used to do to keep the apartment cool in the summer is at night when we sleep, we would open a window and put a box fan in and have to draw in air. So first of all, you have to have it actually be cool enough at night to cool down the apartment. And then also during smoke season, during the fires, you would just be pulling in the smoke and all that, which is not pleasant. Um, so the AC unit is a huge favorite. And then another favorite of mine is the um, Ocean Plum, Beach Plum, the Beach Plum LaCroix flavor. Um, 
is so good. I got recommended it by a student in the MSSE course, like the Yellowstone course that I taught at the end of June. And he was like, it's kind of hard to find, but if you can find it, it's really good. So that and the Guava Sao Paulo are my two favorite LaCroix flavors. And you can get them in the mix pack at Costco, which is really nice. The only thing that I really hate about getting LaCroix in the big packs from Costco is how many plastic, like the ring things are used in as well as the plastic wrap for the whole thing. So it's a lot of single use plastic, which is really bothers me. Um, but they are very good flavors. In terms of entertainment, Matt and I finally finished season two of The Sopranos. We did not finish The Sopranos. We finished season two. The season finale was unhinged. It was wild. Some crazy things happened. And then also it was just like a weird episode because the main character, Tony Soprano, is like having food poisoning. So he was like, having like literal fever dreams. And so because of that, Matt and I both had super weird dreams that night when we finished the, uh, the season and watched that episode. But we're, we're chugging along. Hopefully we'll finish The Sopranos by the end of the year. Who knows, honestly. I also started listening to a podcast, which is Smosh Reads Reddit Stories. And I'm not a huge Smosh fan. Like I don't watch any of their YouTube videos. I don't listen to any of their other podcasts, but I do really enjoy this podcast because I'm a Reddit girly. I love Reddit to the point where I do not allow myself to go on Reddit. I used to spend so much time on Reddit. It was ridiculous. Actually, way back in when I started my YouTube, I think some of my first videos about like curing my phone addiction were deleting like Reddit and Twitter from my phone. Um, that might have been even before I started YouTube. I don't know. But I used to spend way too much time on Reddit. I love reading r slash am I the asshole. I love reading like relationship advice and the things along those lines. And when Smosh does the like reading Reddit stories, a lot of them come from like am I the asshole legal advice. And they're just like these really crazy wild stories and they're super funny. And I really enjoy how they tend to kind of just like get to the point, read the story, talk about it a little bit, talk about the updates, but they're not, they're not doing like an over like super fluous amount of commentary. A lot of it is just like the story, the top comments, a little bit of discussion, moving on. Like you don't have to be listening to them in order or anything like that to get inside jokes. You might get more inside jokes if you like watch Smosh or consume other Smosh content, but I have been really enjoying it because like I said, I love Reddit and Reddit stories. And when Matt and I go on road trips, a lot of times for extended road trips, we'll scroll through Reddit and read and discuss like, am I the asshole especially? So I've been really loving that podcast. And it's been a pretty light book in terms of reading as well. Um, I have only finished two books so far and I'm I have like 10 pages left in my last book so I'll definitely finish it before the month of July is up. The first book that I finished was actually from the Bozeman Public Library and it was let's see Packing for Mars The Curious Science of Life in the Void by Mary Roach. I've read a handful of Mary Roach books. I will say this was probably my least favorite Mary Roach book and I don't know if that's just because I already knew a lot about this being the space nerd that I am or what but yeah it wasn't my favorite i definitely like other ones from her better the second book that i read is the last thing he told me by laura dave i have it in hardcover here um, but i don't have like the dust jacket so i have no idea what the cover of this actually looks like um but here you go i ate this up oh my gosh i finished this so quickly i thought it was so good it's like a little mystery novel she has some other books that I'm curious about reading as well. And I think I'm gonna give this to my friend Haley because um, she reads basically only novels. Um, she does more like sci-fi type novels for the most part, I think, and sci-fi fantasy, but I think she'll enjoy it. And the one that I'm almost done with is In Patagonia by Bruce Chatwin. This is a book that a friend of mine loaned me and yeah, I have 13 pages left. It's been really good and I've really enjoyed reading it. I don't know why it's just taking me forever to read. like. I think a big part of it is, like I said, the month has just been so busy. And so when I do have time to read, I want to do something like way more mindless than that and like watch YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, but I did spend a good chunk of time last night reading it. Um, I put down like 40 pages or so. So it is really good. I think his writing style is really funny. He's like basically just telling all these little like blurbs and stories about his time in Patagonia back in the 1950s, I want to say. It was originally published in 1977. Okay, 1974 was when he was in Patagonia. So 1970s. 
But yeah, it's been a pretty light month for reading, especially compared to June. I think in June I read like six or seven books and this month is I'm at, I'm at three. <laughs> Looking forward to the month of August. I think it'll be a little less crazy, hopefully, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Somehow I feel like I just managed to make things crazy because I'm like, yeah, I can socialize a little bit more. Yeah, I can do this. This sounds fun. Ah. And it is fun, um, but it just makes life a little insane. So the thing that I'm looking forward to most is definitely the wedding that I'm going to in Duluth in a couple of weeks. It's a wedding for, of uh, like acquaintances slash friends of mine from college. I'm not the closest friends with them. I didn't get an original invite. I'm actually going as a friend of mine's plus one. Um, but I'm really excited to see their wedding. I haven't seen them in a while and we were always friendly. Um, and every time I spent time with them, it was always a really, really fun time. They're the nicest, most genuine, like kind hearted people I've ever met in this planet. They are so perfect for each other. And so I'm excited to go to that, to see them and some of our other friends from college that don't live in Bozeman anymore. One of my friends is going to be there who currently lives in Europe and I haven't seen her since... Thanksgiving of 2022 I want to say I went and visited her in Little Rock where um, she was getting her master's and now that she's finished her master's she lives in Europe and so it'll be really great to see her and I'll get to meet her partner for the first time um, who also lives in Europe with her so I'm really excited for that I'm also going to be traveling with my friends from Bozeman we're all on the same flight together we're renting a car together we're staying in Airbnbs and hotels together so it'll just be a really fun time like with all of my friends. <laughs> and so I'm really excited for that. I've never been to Duluth. Um, so that'll be just an absolutely amazing time. I'm so excited. I'm also really excited for this upcoming weekend. It's the Sweet Pea Festival for the Arts in Bozeman. And it's one of my favorite weekends every summer. It's just like a three day festival for food, music, theater, uh, artisans, like crafts, things along those lines. So there's a bunch of like artisan vendors who are selling their handmade stuff. There's concerts that go on basically all day, theater that goes on all day at different parts of, of Lindley Park. And I'm super excited because on Friday night, no, on Saturday night, Saturday night, John Craigie is the headliner. And I love, love, love John Craigie. He came to Bozeman last October. He was just opening for someone who I can't, Langhorn Slim, maybe. I can't remember who he was opening for, but I was in Denver at the time. Matt bought a bunch of tickets. Um, assuming that I was going to be here and a bunch of my friends were going to be here and be able to go with him and none of us were here slash able to go so <laughs> sorry Matt thank you so much for trying so hard um, but I'm so excited the only bummer is Matt I think is going to be down in Teton this weekend and I don't know that many of my other friends are going to be going to the festival but hopefully some of them do so I can hang out with them and watch some amazing live music so that is what I'm looking forward to most in the month of August the semester is also starting, which is always like an exciting time and a really overwhelming time. Bozeman's going to get really busy when the semester starts again, all the students come back, but it also means that like the tourists kind of leave, but not all of them leave. Um, so it's just kind of a weird time. And then work gets a little bit busier because seminars start and everything like that. Um, so that'll be happening, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not taking classes. And in terms of goals for the month of August, I'm not gonna make any. It's been proven over the course of June, July, June and July that uh, the goals that I've been making, I haven't really been reaching and I didn't really change the way that I was living that much based on the goals, aside from like the spending a little bit less money kind of thing. And I just feel like it doesn't feel it just, I just don't think it's productive right now for me to be making these goals because I don't really have a whole lot of motivation to be achieving goals or changing my lifestyle at this point. I'm pretty content with it and I think that's fine. And also, oh, I just don't really want to, can I just be lazy and like exist as a human without having goals going on all the time? So that's where, I, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm not making any goals uh, and I'm just going to keep hanging out and doing what I'm doing. Maybe once the semester starts or... The summer kind of calms down and I feel like I have more capacity to be like striving for improvement or whatever, then I can maybe make some new goals. But yeah, for the month of August, no goals, <laughs> just, just vibes, <laughs> no goals, just vibes. So yeah. 
that's that's where we're at for the month of July. It's been great. It's been so fun and I'm very much looking forward to the month of August. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what your highlight from July was and what you're looking forward to most in August and I'd love to chat with you down there and I'll see you in the next one.